This video is on class 11, chapter 13, water. Now we all know that planet Earth is also called as blue planet. And I think we all know the reason behind it. And the reason planet Earth is called the blue planet is due to the abundant water on its surface. And if you look at the entire solar system, liquid water is a rare commodity. Over 70% of it is found on the Earth's surface. In fact, our human bodies, plants, animals are mostly made up of water. And that's what makes water a rare commodity in the entire solar system. So that was a little introduction part of this chapter. We will now move ahead with the first topic, hydrological cycle. So this word hydrological cycle is known as water cycle. Can you recollect this picture of water cycle? It describes the continuous movement of water on above and below the surface of the earth by the physical process of evaporation, condensation and precipitation. So basically, if you notice, water is being reused. The same water is moving to the land from ocean and then ocean to the land. So this entire thing forms a cycle. And that is what is called as hydrological cycle. And this cycle has been happening for billions of years because the earth is estimated to be 4.5 billion years old. Hence the water cycle has been working for billions of years. And basically now it has become the most important element for the existence of life on earth. And if this cycle doesn't continue, then all the creatures on earth will not get sufficient water and that can be detrimental to all the living beings on earth. So here it says the distribution of water on earth is quite uneven. What we mean by that is only 3% of water is fresh and the remaining 97% is ocean water. And ocean water is extremely salty. Human body only needs a small amount of salt and that makes the ocean water not fit for consumption. And if you look at the 3% of fresh water that exist on earth, in that 69% is found in glaciers. Then 30% is the underground fresh water that we extract with the help of bore wells. And the remaining less than 1% of fresh water is located in lakes, rivers and swamps. And another important aspect here is that many places on earth have plenty of water while others have very limited quantity. If you look at the statistic, this is what makes water a rare commodity and it is also highly exploited. Moments back I told you about the water cycle. So water cycle and hydrological cycle is the same. So basically in this cycle, the circulation of water within the earth's hydrosphere is in the form of liquid, solid and gas. Now evaporation is the process by which water is converted into water vapor, which is in gaseous state with the help of heat. After evaporation, condensation takes place. In condensation, water vapor turns into liquid or solid depending on how low the temperature is. After condensation, precipitation takes place. Now precipitation occurs both in the form of rainfall, snow and ice pellets. If it is rain, then it is in liquid state and if it is snow and ice pellets, then it is in solid state. So this is how water circulates within the Earth's hydrosphere. The renewable water on the Earth is constant, while the demand is increasing tremendously. Now this leads to crisis in different parts of the world. Have a look at this world map. You can see the countries currently dealing with extreme water scarcity. Dark color represents the country with extreme shortage of water. Pause the video and have a look at it. Let's go to the next topic, relief of the ocean floor. Now when we say relief in geography, it means the topography of an area. So relief of the ocean floor means the topography of the ocean floor. If you take a model of planet Earth and start digging in wherever you want to, wherever you are able to create a depression on the outer layer of the Earth, that is where oceans are formed. So basically oceans are the great depression of the Earth's outer layer. Wherever there is a depression, water gets accumulated, right? That's how oceans are formed. If you look at the world map, you will notice that the continents are not necessarily merged with each other. I mean with an exception of Europe and Asia, they merge with each other. However, if you look at North America, Europe, Australia, Africa, South America, Antarctica, they don't merge with each other. But when it comes to oceans, they merge naturally into one another. That means oceans of the world are connected with each other. We cannot create a boundary and say this is part of Atlantic and the other part is Pacific Ocean. But still for the studying purpose, geographers have divided the oceanic part of the Earth into four oceans. They are Pacific, Atlantic, Indian and Arctic. 
The various seas, bays, gulfs and other inlets are part of these four large oceans. Because ultimately all the rivers, inland waterways, everything falls into a sea and sea is very much part of ocean. If you get an opportunity to jump in an ocean, you see that the major portion of the ocean floor is found between 3 to 6 km from the sea level. Now sea level and ocean floor are two different things. A sea level is the level of the sea surface. Once you are at the sea level, you need to go 3 to 6 km below in order to reach the ocean floor. Once you are at the bottom of the ocean floor, the land under the water has exact similar physiographic features like how we see outside on a landmass. What I mean by that is, even ocean floor has large mountains, deep trenches and long plains. These features are exactly what we see on continents. And the reason behind the formation is due to tectonic activities, volcanic eruptions and depositional processes. So this is how we know that there are various landforms under the ocean water and the world there exactly looks like how we see up on the landmass. Now we are going to read about the divisions of the ocean floor. The ocean flows can be divided into four major divisions. So I want you all to pay attention to this topic. Once you know everything that is there in this topic, you will very much understand everything that is there to know about the hidden world at the bottom of the ocean. The first one is continental shelf. You can pause the video and read the entire text from the book. But I'm going to show it to you with an illustration so that it's easy to understand. So basically the top layer of the earth is called the crust. We have continental crust and then we have oceanic crust. The continental crust is the part on which we live. And suppose you go to a beach and then you start walking towards the water, you will notice that the water level will start rising. Actually the water level doesn't rise, the land gradually descends. Then all of a sudden, the continental crust will end at a very steep slope. That point is called as continental shelf break. So the region between the continental shelf break and the beginning of the beach is known as continental shelf. So this region is the shallowest part of the ocean. The width of the continental shelves vary from one ocean to another. The average width of continental shelf is about 80 kilometers. The shelves are almost absent or very narrow along some of the margins like the coasts of Chile, the west coast of Sumatra, etc. 